Protesters shot dead on the street by troops. The former president in prison and a state of emergency declared. Peru is facing a political crisis. What does it mean for its people? And how will the growing instability end? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Hazem Seeker. Since the arrest and jailing of Peru's former president, Pedro Castillo, more than a week ago, violence has spread across the country with troops shooting dead some of his supporters. Two ministers have resigned, the government has declared a state of emergency and curfews have been imposed in 15 regions. In a few moments, we'll be discussing the situation with our guests, but first, this report from Mariana Sanchez in Lima. Soldiers preventing protesters from taking over an airport, using deadly force. Several people were killed on Thursday and more than 50 wounded in the southern Andean city of Ayacucho. Human rights groups say soldiers shot at demonstrators with live rounds. People were walking with stones or other objects in their hands, but they were only stones or a sign, and in response, soldiers shot them. This is extrajudicial killings. This is murder. The army says the soldiers came under attack and responded. The conflict is escalating. Peru is in a state of emergency. The ministers of education and culture have resigned, and protesters are demanding new elections. But on Friday, lawmakers failed to reach 87 votes needed to bring the elections forward. The protesters' main demand the mayor of Ayacucho is angry. We cannot allow the Congress to be out of tune with its own population in the midst of a crisis where we are bleeding to death. The capital, Lima, has been fortified and thousands of police have been deployed. Not all the protesters have been violent. On Friday, police didn't fight these demonstrators, instead escorted them as they marched peacefully. After nine days of social unrest, Walter Mendoza remembers how his indigenous Ashaninka community suffered during the armed conflict more than 30 years ago. On Friday, he marched for peace. We are here because our Ashaninka brothers died, and now we don't want violence. Peruvians who say they're fed up with the violence, not only from now, but from a history of an armed conflict in the 80s and 90s that left more than 60,000 Peruvians dead. That's why these Peruvians are saying they want peace now. Ayacucho is one of the 15 regions under curfew. It was at the center of the violence during the 80s, and again now. President Dina Boluarte has called on governors and church leaders to join government officials and begin dialogue with leaders of the most conflicted areas. But Boluarte has also said she supports the police and the armed forces. Mariana Sanchez Al Jazeera, Lima, Peru. Now, Peru has had a string of high level corruption scandals and six presidents since 2016. So, who is Castillo and why is he in conflict with Congress? The former farmer, teacher and union leader from rural Peru came to office promising a fairer economic system and an end to the high rates of poverty. Castillo and members of his family are the subject of six corruption investigations. He has denied any wrongdoing. Since he was elected in July 2021, Castillo faced three impeachment votes, the first less than six months into his term. On the 7th, Castillo tried to dissolve Congress and rule by decree. Instead, the legislature voted to remove him, accusing him of trying to stage a coup. Well, let's bring in our guest now to talk more about this. Paula Ugas is an investigative journalist. She joins us uh, via Skype now uh, from Lima. In our London studio, we have Javier Farhe, a Peru analyst and historian. And Jo Marie Burt joins us from Washington, D.C. She is Associate Professor of Political Science and Latin American Studies at George Mason University. A very warm welcome uh, to all of you. So, uh, Paula, let me start with you. Um, beyond the constitutional issues, what is at the root uh, of all of these problems and why have people, so many people come out into the streets 
uh, in support of, of Castillo. Uh, in Peru, people are angry with the politicians at all. Uh, since 2016, we have six presidents, as you said, and it's because uh, two crises uh, in one. The first is the corruption, uh, because all the ex-presidents from 2001 until 2020 were investigated by Lava Jato by, to receive bribe from Odebrecht, a Brazilian company. And they don't want to be uh, in jail. They don't want to be, uh, to be uh, at, uh, in, in front of the justice. So they push in the Congress a lot of uh, a lot of power to to take out the president that was in the moment uh, Pedro Pablo Kuczynski, and then with that with that uh, and then it, it start all this war uh, in where the politicians are disconnected from from the people. Now uh, it's really now the the politicians are uh, are disconnected from the you know, from the people because they don't understand that they don't want uh, they don't they want uh, new elections they don't want to to see the the people the, the, the congressmen doing that they always do personal affairs and in the the, the Dina Boluarte the president she has made a, a dangerous alliance with the armed forces to remain in power she she has uh, ten, uh, eight years in, in the as a president, and we have a uh, uh, 20, 23 people uh, dead, and it's inedit in, in in for Peru that a uh, president it is uh, it uh, continues in power and nobody raises uh, a neighbor to to tell her that she's wrong. Uh, uh, when, when we're talking right now, she's talking, she's doing a press conference, and she says that she she will continue, she will remain in power, and she has a, she was lead uh, accompanied by the army, and it's really dangerous that because I think it's really similar situation that happened in Bolivia when Janet Agnes do the same thing, and she was with the with the armed forces to to remain in power, and I seen this. Uh, it could be a, a, a really, really, really dark situation from Peru. Javier uh, Farhe, how do you see uh, the situation that's playing out in, in Peru right now? And do you fear a return to a more uh, bleak past in, in the country's history? Yeah, but I agree entirely with Paul. I would like to add to what she has said is that we're talking about the grievances which go date back long before Mr. Castillo was even a candidate. These are all grievances that people in the countryside, in this particular case in Ayacucho, have had for many years. We mustn't forget that Ayacucho was the center of the activities of the Shanin Path that called like Maoist uh, rebel movement in, which in the 1980s started a war against waged a war against the Peruvian state with dire consequences for the Peruvian society. Uh, and this is all history of neglect. And I would say that the anger is now concentrated on Congress. President Boluarte, just not long before we went on air to do this program, uh, gave a speech where she accused Congress of not fulfilling that commitment by not approving early elections. The initial proposal for April 2024 moved back to December 2023, and they rejected this for different reasons. Some people from the left and some people from the right rejected and voted against this, and that is going to exacerbate the situation in Peru. In the case of, for example, Yacucho, you mentioned earlier today in, in your report, uh, Carlos Rua, who is the uh, regional governor of Ayacucho, and he is saying, look, Lima doesn't seem to care about what's going on here. Peruvians are dying here, and they don't seem to do anything about that, and I expect Congress to do something about this. And in this speech that um, uh, President Boluarte gave not long ago, just before we started talking, she accused uh, Congress of not fulfilling the commitment, and she appealed to the communities in the countryside, speaking in Quechua, which is the language that the majority of indigenous people speak in the Andean region of Peru. So she's appealing to the grassroots to say, look, stop the violence. Many of these violences perpetrated by uh, organized groups, nothing to do with the situation in Peru. Please stop this. I want to talk to you. I want to start solving the problems. Of course, you won't have time to solve all these problems in the time that remains of her mandate, because 
we expect that the early election will be called. Now, the, the Speaker of Congress, has, uh, uh, Jose Williams, has said that they are going to extend the current legislature in order to be able to debate this issue of the early election. Now, the court is very much in the, sorry, the ball is very much in the court of the Peruvian Congress. President Bolarte has said that, and 83% of people, according to a, a reliable opinion poll, say that we want early elections. So that's where the beginning of trying to find some way to calm the situation in Peru would be in Congress voting for early election because that's what the majority of people want in Peru. Otherwise, the situation is going to escalate and we have to be worried about what could happen. Some calm has been restored, but the price has been very high. Having the army in the, in the, in, in the, in the streets uh, sort of doing police work is not something that Peruvians see uh, you know, kindly because of all experiences in our history. So in that respect, the situation could get worse, but Congress could start helping solve this problem by voting for early elections in December 2023. That right. won't solve the problems, which I said they, well, way back before Castillo, but it could start. It could be a good start. Let's get Joe Marie Bird's uh, take on this. Um, where does the current president, Dina Bolawarte, fit into this? She, she is now the president as a result of... Uh, um, uh, Pedro Castillo being being impeached and, and removed from office. She she has to kind of tread carefully here, uh, doesn't she? Uh, is uh, are early elections the solution to this? Oh, I think early elections are the only solution to this. 85% of Peruvians have said consistently that they want new elections. Um, and that's not a new demand. Um, for months, Peruvians have been demanding uh, the phrase in, in Spanish is que se vayan todos. Everyone leave, everyone out. They wanted new elections for the president and for the Congress. Now that President Castillo has been removed from office, um, the demand for a new new elections has grown even stronger. So I think that is front and center. Um, so to, to, as our, our your other guests have noted, uh, President Baluarte this morning uh, pressed Congress to uh, vote in favor of convening new elections after yesterday's vote in which they, they could not agree on this platform. Um, but it's a little bit like asking the fox to take care of the hens. Right. The Congress is the central problem in Peru today. Um, and so it, it becomes a real problem asking this Congress run by, which is dominated by a, a coalition of extreme right wing uh, movements uh, to do this. And it is also curious to note that in yesterday's vote, the Fujimori bloc voted entirely in favor of convening early elections, um, which has led some folks to speculate um, some kind of alliance between uh, Boluarte and the Fujimoristas. Um, it's unclear to me what this means, but I think that the first thing we might say about that is that the Fujimoristas think that if there are new elections, uh, then their candidate, Keiko Fujimori, the daughter of former dictator Alberto Fujimori, who is currently in prison for human rights violations and corruption, uh, would be well poised to win. So there is an incredible amount at stake here. Um, Dina Boluarte could also resign, and that would, uh, if I'm not if I'm not misunderstood, and I, I would like uh, uh, Paolo Gas to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that if she resigned, it would automatically trigger um, uh, early elections without the reforms that I think a lot of people believe are necessary. But it would at least break the deadlock that the current Congress has on the situation. I mean, the Congress has behaved in ways that are absolutely abysmal. From, from the very beginning of the uh, Pedro Castillo government, this Congress, the, especially the right-wing groups, has denied the legitimacy of the uh, Castillo government. They claim that he actually lost the elections, which he won, though by a slim margin, saying that there had been fraud. They tried to go to the OAS, demanding that the OAS recognize fraud, but they never demonstrated with any proof that there was fraud, but they continue to maintain uh, this discourse. They've tried repeatedly to have uh, President uh, Castillo removed from office using uh, this very vague clause in the Constitution uh, uh, called moral incapacity, um, which they've interpreted as they see fit. Um, and they've sought other mechanisms to get him removed from office. So they have been kind of pressing down on him from the very beginning to limit his government, to obstruct his government. Um, and now that he's gone, they find they feel that they are the victors and they have, um, you know, the, the, the world is their oyster, so to speak. 
Um, so this is really where the pro problem lies. And the question is, I mean, with today's uh, announcement, I, I sort of expected to hear Dina Boluarte resign this morning when I heard she was going to speak. Given that there, as our, your other guests have noted, 21 people have been killed in the past 10 days in street in in protest by police, most by police bullets. Right. Um, that is a huge number of people in what are m mostly peaceful manif manifestations uh, being killed as let's, a result of. Peaceful let's put some action. of that back to uh, Paula Ugas. Then, what what, what do you think um, uh, the current president Dina uh, Boluarte needs to do here to to, to calm the situation? Well, uh, a lot of people uh, are expecting that they say that to force an early, to, to resign and to force an early election uh, with, uh, because uh, the situation in Peru is really, uh, she, can, she can go, she can see be, beyond the, what happened in all the country. She says she wants to, 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 to have a, 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 a dangerous alliance with the army forces. Because it's the only the only way she, she says to, to she, she saw to remain in the power, and now she doesn't she doesn't think uh, for the country for the good of the country she, she only think because she wants to continue to be president and it's really selfish for her to do that in a country where the, where the people wants to everybody go and with a. Dina Boluarte should force an early election with her immediate immediate resignation. We we are expected in the night or in the morning of, of, of today if she that she will resign, but she didn't. Uh, and she, and, and uh, contrary to that, she appears in public television with the army, with the chief of the army, with the chief of the police, of the police, and she wants to not recognize all the deaths. 23 people died in Peru with police uh, police ballots. This is really, really uh, contrary to the human rights policy for any country in Latin America. And in Peru, we didn't see this kind of blindness from a leader since uh, a long time ago, and we have six presidents since 2016. Mm -hmm. So I think Dina Boluarte, now she crossed the line. Javier, Javier Farhe, I want to put this to you, because it, it has been argued, and not just by uh, Pedro Castillo's uh, critics, that many of his problems were, were self-inflicted, that he, he changed his cabinet members about 80 times in the 17 months that he was uh, in power. It's a very, very chaotic administration, and there is also the undeniable fact that he, he tried to uh, dissolve Congress and rule by decree. And his critics will say, this is why he was impeached and removed from office, and this is why he is currently uh, uh, in, in detention. What do you say to that? Mm -hmm. Well, basically, there's a combination of factors. It is true that there was a great deal of incompetence from Mr. Castillo's government, but at the same time, the Congress put obstacles to every single appointment that he made for his cabinet. The Congress impeached minister after minister after minister. He had to change ministers sometimes on a weekly basis. It was an absolutely absurd situation where Congress would not let Mr. Castillo rule the country. I mean, I have lost count of how many ministers he lost because Congress impeached them or Congress put pressure on him uh, to change ministers. It's very difficult to rule a country where you can't have a stable uh, executive with a stable uh, cabinet. At the same time, she showed a great deal of incompetence, maybe because of the lack of, lack of experience. Whatever the reason is, the fact of the matter is that he was pretty incompetent. Many of the promises that he uh, wanted to fulfill were not fulfilled, especially for the countries, people in the countryside and the provinces, and that contributed to the situation. In case of the, of the accusations of corruption, people in the inner circle were accused, being accused of alleged cases of corruption by the attorney general. Trying to close down Parliament, the Congress was a political suicide. Uh, when the judge justified the request made by prosecutors to put him behind bars for 18 months, basically two of the big arguments was one, that when he made the announcement that he wanted to close Congress, he had contacted the head of the armed forces and the police, no, sorry, the head of the national police to go physically close Congress and to arrest the then attorney, the, the attorney general. 
which was something that is considered illegal, but also there was dangers that he would flee the country because Mexico had offered to give him a political asylum. The two of the reasons, among many of the reasons that were read throughout two hours of uh, something convoluted sort of reasoning, uh, you know, to put him behind bars for 18 months, to build up a case against him. So he, there was a combination of incompetence, but also it was, a, it was also the, the job that the Congress did to make sure that he did not rule because the majority of people were against him. And that is, this is one of the, what's happening now is one of the results of that, of that period of total instability in Peru. Uh, Joe Marie Burt, if we broaden this out a little bit and talk about the implications that this has beyond Peru's borders, how, how is this dividing the rest of, of, of Latin America? Well, b before I answer that question, may I just say one thing about, to follow up on your, your prior guest's comment, um, I think it's important to note that for a vast majority of Peruvians who are poor, from rural areas or live in poor urban communities, um, Castillo represented something quite unique, right? The first time that someone from their social group um, had ever been elected to the presidency. And I think one reason you see so many people coming out in defense of him, I mean, not all the protests are demanding his release and return to the presidency, to be sure, but many people are because they feel they voted for Castillo, they believed in his uh, promises for change, for real political and economic change in a country where political and economic exclusion for these majorities has been, you know, quite abysmal. So I think that is something that um, is often overlooked from a perspective of, you know, looking at things from Lima. So I think that is really important to keep in mind. And the not only was Congress and other politicians obstructionists, as one, as one of your guests was saying, vis-a-vis um, -vis, uh, President yeah. Castillo, but they were openly racist and yeah. and and disdainful toward yeah. him because he was from rural areas, because of the way he spoke Spanish, um, claiming he was uneducated, and you know, incapable, and so forth. Um, and and a lot of people took offense at that. And so this, I think, has fueled okay. the indignation around the way he was treated. Yeah. But if I, if I could get um, back to my uh, original question about yeah. the, the wider implications of this beyond beyond Peru. Yeah, I mean, I think you've seen with with that there was a statement put out by Colombia, Argentina, Mexico, and Bolivia for standing behind President Castillo and 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 asserting that he is still the. Uh, you know, elected president of Peru and demanding that he be returned to office and so forth, uh, and also demanding, you know, that he be uh, treated with due process. I absolutely think um, it's important that he be treated with due process. And there is some, there are some questions about this, as one of your guests said a moment ago. Um, but to deny that President Castillo tried to carry out a coup, not only in which he tried to shut down Congress, intervene in the uh, uh, judiciary uh, and rule by decree, right? Um, one cannot deny the, that reality. And they've tried to explain it away through a very a variety of theories. He was drugged, he's been kidnapped, he was confused, he was betrayed, um, et cetera. Um, we all saw on television President Castillo announce his uh, autogolpe, which ultimately failed because he did not have the support for his actions, which were in effect um, unconstitutional. So the the it's not surprising, I suppose, to see some of the Latin American uh, left-wing uh, governments rise up in support of Castillo, um, but part of their comments are absolutely um, inaccurate. All right. We're going to have to leave it there, and we will certainly be following uh, how all of this uh, plays out, and we appreciate uh, all of you putting this in perspective uh, for us. Uh, Paola Ugas, Javier Farhe, and Joe Marie Burt, thanks very much for being on Inside Story. And thank you, as always, for watching. Remember, you can see the program again anytime. Just go to our website, aljazeera.com, and for more discussion, there's our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle there is at AJ Inside Story. For me, Hazem Sika and the whole team here, bye for now.